Welcome to the G4 Cube Complete Disassembly Guide. I am by no means an expert here, so if you are an expert, feel free to let everybody know in the comments below and tell them exactly what I'm doing wrong, because I am just a humble guy with a screwdriver. Thankfully, the G4 Cube is really easy to disassemble. All you have to do is press on that telescoping arm, and uh, you can pull out the entire computer in this perfect little cube. Kind of looks like a CubeSat. Easily accessible are the RAM cards and RAM slots. Uh, I have two RAM cards installed in the three RAM slots of the G4 Cube. This one is a 256 megabyte RAM card. Kind of funny to think that we uh, think 256 megabytes is super teeny, but that was a lot of RAM back at the time. Um, we'll put that to the side and grab the other one. You'll notice throughout the uh, rest of this dare down, I'll be using different screws and screw heads and all that fun stuff. Instead of keeping track of all this, uh, which is kind of a kind of a pain on my end because I'm lazy, as most people are, I would uh, recommend you just get the iFixit kit. It has about 30 pieces that you will find everything that you need to disassemble, just about anything in that little 30-piece iFixit kit. To begin the complete disassembly, I would recommend taking off this uh, backbone type cover on the top. It has about 10 screws that hold it all in, which is uh, important because uh, we don't want anything to move around in this tiny little cube with like zero room for uh, anything moving around. Um, we have a little cable that connects the power button to the rest of the computer. You'll notice that uh, this power button is actually not a button. I know, I know, most things are buttons. You, even our phones use buttons as, as ways to turn off and on the device. But even back in the year 2000, Apple figured out a way to make the power button capacitive. That means it would detect your finger before you actually even touched anything. You're not actually touching any electronics. So here you see it's through a completely clear piece of plastic. It detects the fingerprint and the, uh, the LED light will light up in behind it. So definitely a cool piece of technology, especially from like 20 plus years ago. All right, so uh, we need to uh, take a quick look here at the top of the computer. Um, this is probably the best view you're gonna get for the anatomy of a G4 cube. I've uh, laid out the best that I can, figure out what little uh, items are. If you wanna take a screenshot of that and uh, observe that at your leisure, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, to take out the uh, GPU card, which I believe is the, the first thing we wanna do, just take out the GPU. Um, it's kind of the first thing in this big sandwich. Um, we're gonna remove that little screw that I just took out, and then you'll notice that there are two screws at the bottom of the computer, um, as well as some other screws around the GPU card that you can just remove fairly easily. Now, one of the funny things that uh, Apple had to engineer around is everything is just packed into this little cube, so they didn't have a lot of like uh, horizontal space, so everything kinda had to go vertical. So you'll find little uh, little cards like this. This is a this is a right angle adapter. It looks like so it takes the GPU cards uh, uh, slot input output thingy, whatever that slot's called. I'm not a computer guy. Um, it has this uh, right angle basically. So the female on one side and then the the male on the other. It's kind of just interesting engineering, uh, seeing that Apple had to think through all of this stuff. Um, that also ca uh, contains a power supply uh, for the GPU card. Um, we can take out the uh, two screws there at the bottom, which are the only screws that are visible on the outside of the computer, fascinatingly enough. And this is the entire GPU. So that is that. Is that. Uh, I believe it's a Rage 128 Pro graphics card. Uh, back in the day, that was considered to be pretty decent. Powered a pretty pretty good sized display, almost 1080p, not quite, just above 720. Underneath that, we will see the modem. Uh, this is a little itsy bitsy modem card. Uh, back in the day, to connect to the internet, you had to talk to the phone lines, and that was a completely analog system, so a lot of older computers had actual cards that were designed to handle analog system um, conversion between analog and digital. Now we are looking at the entire logic board. The logic board here is pretty interesting because the logic board really is not where the CPU is held, and we'll get to that in a minute, but the logic board is just kind of a connection point for a ton of different things. So as we remove uh, screws and poles and different uh, points here and try to figure out how to get this open, um, you will see that, oh, this is a little power uh, supply. So the power supply comes in, but a board here, this little board distributes the power throughout the computer. Um, so that's that's kind of important there. It's kind of just smudged up in the corner. Um, this is a really hard to reach little screw that uh, took, a, took a minute to get out. But after, after a little bit of finagling, got the screw out and uh, we were able to get the entire logic board slid out. And what you will realize is the logic board does not actually have the CPU on it. 
I know, I know. Who would who would have guessed? Uh, most computers these days, I mean, actually all computers these days have the CPU directly on the main logic board um, or the main motherboard if you're a PC guy. Um, the, the logic board here doesn't even have the CPU. So that little board underneath is actually where the CPU is. I was kind of surprised by that. There's a data cable that goes to the uh, hard drive that I just took off. And uh, there it is up close. You got all your uh, I.O. slots. Basically, as you can see, it's just like a place to have all the wires meet. So the uh, actual CPU here is not even screwed onto the heatsink. It was just stuck on with thermal paste. It took me a while to figure that out. Um, but there it is, the G4 processor uh, in all of its glory from early 2000. Uh, definitely a fun little processor. It has tons of history. Uh, if you want to uh, take a look at that yourself, that is, that is some close-ups there. Now we move on to the other side of the computer where we have the hard drive and the DVD drive. Uh, the hard drive was probably the, the most puzzling to get out because it's kind of lodged between the heat sink and the DVD drive in its own little cradle. And it is suspended above the, the base frame uh, for vibration reasons. And so there's this weird ribbon cable, which I didn't get a great angle of, unfortunately, but uh, you have to take off the airport card, which I just did there. And uh, then you also have to take off the DVD drive before you can actually take out the hard drive. Um, also, that little power supply uh, connector was really hard to get out. Also, this is an IBM hard drive. Can we all just appreciate that? In the year 2000, Apple was buying parts from IBM for their computers. Uh, kind of funny seeing how that was uh, the height of the Mac versus PC uh, war that was going on. This is an actual Apple uh, CD drive, though, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, so now yeah, we can actually stick a DVD in there if we want. And there's this little itsy bitsy window that you can actually see if there's a DVD in there or not. So the rest of this computer honestly can be torn down uh, further if you would like to. Like there are little batteries and uh, a bunch of wiring. There are little airport antennas as well. Uh, if you want to continue tearing it down, um, it's just it, it, it's just so small and hard to see. It's, it's not worth making a whole guide about it. But that, that'll get you at 98% of the way there. Um, you have the entire uh, disassembly here. Obviously, the handle still works, and uh, that is the G4 Cube disassembly with Nick. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.